Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome Rory McIlroy back to the Masters Tournament. And without further ado, I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Taylor. Hey, Rory. Can you uh, take us through your off-season thoughts on how you developed your plan for bringing out your best performance in this year's tournament? Uh, yeah, I think I, um, you know, this is my 16th start in the Masters, so uh, I feel like I've done it, um, you know, quite a few different ways. And um, I guess just trying to bring a little bit of normalcy into, you know, what I sort of try to do week in, week out. You know, I, I play 25 weeks a year, and um, there's no point in doing anything different this week compared to other weeks, I guess. So, um, you know, it was nice to, you know, I wanted to play quite a bit leading up to this just to feel like my game was sharp or if it wasn't sharp to try to get it in the best, uh, the best shape possible. Uh, and I feel, feel like I made a, you know, a couple of good strides in that direction last week in, in Texas. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's sort of nice to, to get home after a week and reset um, and then, you know, you know, I usually try to get into tournaments either Monday nights or you know Tuesday mornings, and um, you know that's sort of what I've what I've done this week. And uh, you know, I came up here last week to play two practice rounds at the start of the week, so I feel like I've already got most of my prep work done. So it's just about going out there and um, being relaxed and being in the right frame of mind. And um, you know, the more I can do that, the more I'll be able to, to execute on the golf course. Jeff, uh, Rory, two things. What would you, uh, how do you feel about having played more this year? Do you feel like it's done what you'd hoped in terms of um, uh, your mindset? And then just also, what's your, uh, what do you see as the biggest difference in the golf course since you uh, first played here? Yeah, I, um, I, I think it's been beneficial to, to play a little bit more this year leading, uh, leading into, you know, not just this tournament, but the spring and the summer. I think I'm a little more... Um, in tune with where my game is and where my misses are and how to, you know, I think once you play a lot, you learn just how to manage your game a little bit better um, instead of if you haven't played that much and you're a little rusty. And um, I just think that patterns emerge the more that you play. Uh, and I've, you know, I feel like I've got a, a, a big enough um, sort of data set of, of, of rounds to sort of know how to manage what, what I'm doing right now. So I think that's been a good thing. Uh, and then the course over the years, uh, it's obviously got longer. Um, I would say some of the areas surrounding the greens have become a little sharper. So like, um, like the drop off after like the, you know, the left, side of the third green, for example, that drop off is sharper. The back right of the sixth green now, that fall off is sharper. Like there's a lot of sharpness to the edges of the, the green compounds that, that didn't used to be there, um, which makes it, you know, the right of the 11th green, um, which makes it just a little trickier to, um, to chip to and, and just penalizes the, the misses a little bit more, which ultimately I think is a good thing. Sean. Rory, Tiger was in here a little while ago and he, said very forthright, like, yes, Rory will get it done. He'll win a green jacket someday. I know you have a lot of people in your life who are comfortable saying that, but does it mean more when someone of his stature says it so forthrightly? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's flattering. It's really, it's, it's nice to, to hear, uh, in my opinion, the best player ever to play the game say something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, does that mean that it's going to happen? Um, obviously not, but uh, you know he's been around the game long enough to know that I at least have the potential to do it. And I mean, I know I've got the potential to do it too. It's not as if I haven't, um, you know, been a been a pretty good player for the last couple of decades. So, um, but yeah, it's it's nice to hear it when it when it comes out of his mouth. Dave Scranna. Okay, Stephen. Hi, Rory. Um, with what's at stake this week, how much focus have you put on simply trying to enjoy yourself? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that's the, you know, I just drove in probably 30 minutes ago. And um, yeah, I think you have to, you know, you have to sort of treat this week with the 
you know, if I, you know, if I cast my mind back to 18-year-old Rory and then, you know, driving down Magnolia Lane for the first time, how would I feel? And I think it's just always trying to go back to, you know, being grateful and, and feeling incredibly lucky that you can be a part of this tournament and you get to compete in it every year. And, um, you know, thankfully I've improved a bit since, you know, my first start here. And I, I feel like, you know, I've um, I've got all the tools to to do well this week. It's But again, it's, you know, to to bring those tools out, I think the, one of the most important things is to enjoy it and, and smell the, I guess not the roses, the azaleas along the way. Rory. Rory, uh, time with, with Butch, um, whether it's technical, and I'm sure there's part of that, but he's a great mind manipulator. So when you're with him, and I mean that in a complimentary way. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, no, he's like Lombardi. He's, he's, yeah. So, when you're with him, is it nourishing immediately, or is it something that you you reflect on over time? Things that he's imparted upon you and your communication with him since you've seen him is it regular? Yeah, it's regular. We probably text on a a, a daily, daily basis. Um, but I think that you know, if anyone that has been to see Butch um, over the years, the first thing he'll do is he'll bring you into his office, and you know, you you know, we sat and had a. 45 minute conversation before um, he even looked at a swing or um, even before we really talked about golf at all, you know, talked about a lot of other stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, he is, he's part sort of psychologist, part swing coach. And um, like, I always, I always joke, but you spend four hours with Butch and you go away with two swing tips and 30 stories. Um, but you always go away hitting the, hitting the ball better than when you came. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was a really beneficial trip. You know, for, for the technical side of things, which I think, um, you know, I made progress in that department last week, especially with my strokes gained approach numbers, which is what I really wanted to do. Um, but yeah, it's also, you know, just spending time around someone like that that's coached, you know, a, a lot of the best players in the world and, and sort of him giving you his blessing on things. You know, I think that's, that's nice validation as well. Daniel. Thank you, sir. Murray, the, the, the long-standing tradition in golf is that you sign your scorecard and you say, this is what I shot today. Do you think things have changed in recent years where we should maybe get away from that model a little bit and, and give more authority to rules <coughs> officials like we see in other sports, or do you like the system as it is? Uh, it's a, it's a, I mean, in a way, I'd like to give more responsibility to the rules officials because it takes responsibility off us, in a way. Um, yeah, but I, you know, I think most of you in this room, room know that I'm a traditionalist, and I, there's there's a lot of things about golf and the traditions of golf that I um, that I really enjoy, and I um, I almost cherish because I think it, you know, if you if you can play golf the right way, it's sort of makes you feel like you can live your life the right way at the same time. Um, it's a great metaphor for life. And uh, yeah, I think there's, you know, I'm quite nostalgic when it comes to those sorts of things in the game. And it would be a shame to, to get rid of all of them. But, you know, we do have, you know, in the top level of professional golf, we do have everyone keeping our score, whether it's through apps or through walking scores or through whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, I think what happened to Jordan at Riviera, for example, is um, it was unfortunate, and and obviously we all we all know what to do, but um, I don't think that an error like that should mean a disqualification from a tournament. Todd, Rory, um, from a mentality and an emotional perspective, in regards to attitude, when you come into this week. How do you manage wanting to win this tournament, but not the desire being so big that it becomes an obstacle? Uh, yeah. Uh, I would say not trying to win it from the first tee shot. I think that's something that I've tried to learn. And, you know, it's a 72-hole golf tournament. Um, I've won from 10 strokes back going into the weekend. I've, you know, there's loads of different ways to do it. I think, you know, trying to, you know, and again, I've, you know, I've said this, this golf course gets you to, 
to chase things a little more than other golf courses if you make a bogey or if you get yourself out of position because it always tempts you to do something you think you can do. And, you know, I'm pretty confident in my golf game. I think I can do most things. So, but sometimes you just have to um, take the conservative route and, and be a little more disciplined and patient. And, um, you know, with a 72-hole golf tournament, you can be patient, you can be disciplined, and you can you know, stick to your game plan. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, I've, I've really tried to tried to learn at, at this tournament over the years. That's very, thanks very much, Roy. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much, ladies and gentlemen.